Hello, and welcome to Broads and Books. I'm Amy. And I'm Erin, and this is episode number 124. It's Rain and Men. It's Rain and Men. Terrifying idea. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be pelted by a men falling from the sky. No, I don't think we need more. No, <laughs> we don't. Oh, no. We're doing good. We're all, we got plenty of men we're folks. We're plum full. <laughs> plum full oh, of yeah. men. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, let me explain why I yes. picked this song. Yes, please okay. do. This please comes do. from the Weather Girls. Solid. Obviously. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, this is uh, part of our one hit wonder mm-hmm. series. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, I feel like this is a, a good one hit wonder just in general. But also I got a little meta with this one. You I got did. a little you thoughtful did. about this one uh-huh. where I'm like, you know, this song did well uh-huh. when it came out. Uh, you know, it was a pop hit, a dance hit. Mm-hmm. I don't think they anticipated the massive gay following that would come for this song. Right. Because this right. is now a staple of every drag bar and every, uh, mm-hmm. you know, LGBTQ plus themed movie. It's everywhere. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. And it makes sense. It does. So this week we're talking about books and pop culture picks with a cult following. Such a great theme. It's just a little twisty. You got to follow twisty. it there. Yeah, you, you got to follow the, the turn. You got to yeah. follow the turn. Yeah. Dodge the men and follow the turn. Because <laughs> that's what we do. Sometimes we, we're not simple. We want to make you work no, for our we're themes. Not simple. We want to make you really think. Yes. Right from the start. You have yes. to think about why we made this theme. Yes. I'm thinking about it right now, and I still like it. Are you still thinking about being pelted by men? I was a little bit. I was like, how would that? Do you that? think they come like full-size men? I mean, obviously, because they're called men. It's raining yeah. men. It's not like yeah. childs. Childs? That would be, children? That'd be worse. That'd be worse. Shoulder, and I feel like I had to catch them and prevent. Yeah, that's true. Whereas these men. Get, land on your feet or yeah. don't. <laughs> I don't care. You don't care if you own, get man. concussions when you're on a football field, so I'm not exactly. responsible. If you And if you dent my car or my mm-hmm. roof. That's on you. Yeah. Well, then I'm going to deal with another one of you with my insurance claim because exactly. you know it's going to be a guy. Ugh. Yeah. So they cause the problem and then they won't fix the problem. Right. That's what's happening if it's raining men. Yes. Bust your own noggins. I don't got time for it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, when I was thinking about questions for this week, I was thinking of like, what else would you like to have rain from the sky? And I was like, nothing. Nothing. There's nothing, nothing at that all. I want to have come. From because the sky. hail is weird enough when it hail comes down. Hail is weird enough. Don't like that. Even I thought of like candy. That would be terrifying. That would be terrifying. Because it's not going to absorb. No. It's just going to pile up. It's going to hit you on your noggin. On the noggin. Now we on got more noggin, noggin problems. Now you're going to knock a lot of people out. You're going to give a lot of concussions. Yeah. You're going to, yeah. you know, really stunt growth for a lot of people. You are. You're yeah. going to have all those kinds of, you know, people that like to claim they're injured when they're not walking around in neck braces. Say exactly. they got pelted by Reese's Pieces during right. the last rainstorm. Okay. So what happened if it wasn't just water and it was like flavored something? Like oh. it was, you know, so it's not like, like solid. <laughs> <laughs> A little Dr. Pepper raining from the sky. I went Shasta. Did you ever have Shasta? <laughs> oh, some Fanta. Yeah. Fanta's at least name brand. This is an RC Cola. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Back to Dr. Pepper. That's a solid choice. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. We would bring home RC Cola a lot or like uh-huh. the high V brand, you know. Oh, yeah. You know. It was cheap. I always thought of Shasta because when we played softball, we always like when we were younger and oh. someone had to bring snacks or treats after. They yeah. always brought, that was we were grew up in the era where it was still OK to bring pop. Yeah. <laughs> but you didn't want to pay for name pop brand pop. It was a full on beverage. Yeah, yeah. So you brought Shasta and uh-huh. you got every flavor they had and they were all bad. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. great for a eight year old. <laughs> OK, well, that's off topic. The things we but... ingested in our body as children were weird. Yeah, I mean, I don't Just know. Just gonna if make it's a blanket statement. No, it's true. That's I true. drank a huge fountain Dr Pepper yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I told you yesterday. I walked into a a, um, a candy store. Yeah. Because I'm a 45 year old woman and I wanted some candy. As you should. Yeah, yeah. And there was a lot of like little uh, snack size bags of candy, so I got a shit ton. I got banana runs. I got, oh, I oh, love banana runs. Right. So much. I got tiny little M and M's. I got. Uh, I don't like the tiny M and M's. You don't like the tiny no. M and M's. There was one other thing that I got that I was really pumped about, and I forget what it is now. Oh, gummy bears! A little mm. thing of gummy bears. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I got all of that, but also there, there were still packs of candy cigarettes. I was like, what? Those no still way. exist? That blows my mind. Right? So I don't know if they still exist from like 1977 and they, they're still, they're just you know. They're selling them Right, them. right. Yeah. Or if someone still produces these. Oh my God, I'm going to go there and get some before Mike and I's next road trip. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, totally. There's a whole pack of them. 
Wow. Or a whole uh, display, I mean. I can't. Okay. And the, the girls behind the counter were like high school age. Mm-hmm. And so they were like, yeah, I brought one to a party the other night. And they were like, what? Because she wasn't 18, she said. So it was mind blowing that she would bring cigarettes. And I'm like, oh, honey. It oh, sounds boy. like you have, a, you wow. have a sweet, sweet life. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Just ring up my candy. Because <laughs> <laughs> it's raining men out there it's and I need some candy. Men. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So when we're thinking about this theme. Yeah. We said kind of cult following. What yeah. do you think the difference is between a cult following and a trend? I think it's very simple. I think it's popular versus unpopular. Okay. So I think it's like a trend is like a TikTok dance. Okay. A cult following is like a Rocky Horror Midnight Show because the movie s- did so bad when it first came out, but then oh. it came back around 20 years later okay. and everyone was into it, but it's yeah. still an underground thing. And it's like... Trend is mainstream. Cult following is a little underground subculture. Yeah. That kind of thing. Okay. That's a great way to explain it. Yeah. No, that's perfect. Yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah. hundred percent. And that doesn't mean that cult followings won't become big enough that they could be considered Mm -hmm. popular, you know, but they don't start popular. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we're thinking about like cult followings, but I also said like we were going a little meta Mm -hmm. this Mm -hmm. weekend Mm -hmm. or this weekend, Mm -hmm. this, this week, this this, this day, episode, this episode, Whatever thank you. Time. You know, mm-hmm. time doesn't matter. Um, what do you think is the difference between being meta and self conscious? I think aware? it comes down to awareness. Yeah. Like, I think if you are, the idea of meta is kind of being self aware or having kind of a, a self awareness or existing within yourself and also trying to uh, there almost seems to be this thing around meta like about bettering yourself or mm. something and to me self-conscious has more to do with esteem like you're aware of yourself but you're almost hyper aware in a way that you're worried about how that appears to other people mm-hmm. and i don't necessarily think if you're meta that you're that worried about how you appear to other people you just are very aware of yourself yeah. you're very centered on that yeah it almost feels like a new age way to kind of be egotistical in some mm. ways and and that's not really fair because that's I don't think that's how the definition or how meta yeah, started, but yeah. I think that that's the trajectory it's taken. That's a good point because I think meta probably means more like thinking about thinking, right? Yes, like think, yes. being aware of the uh-huh. process of thinking and, and whatever. Uh-huh. But you're right. Maybe with like Facebook taking on that name uh-huh. and just the way it's been used, it's really changed. Yeah, I think it's taken on this kind of other context about yeah. self awareness on a different level, but almost like on a cult leader level. Yeah, of like. I'm better than you because I'm meta or I think oh, about this on a different plane. Oh, that's a plane. good point. Which shows yeah. where our culture's at, I guess. Yeah. Also, I hate that Facebook chose meta. I what is a, a dumb... metaverse? Yeah. Come on. Come on. Because that's not the meaning no. of it. That's not the... No. 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 And actually, I can't think of anything that's less meta. Right. In in the traditional definition. Right. Yeah. And again, if we're going like trend or cult following, you know, uh-huh. meta, whatever, like this is way over here. You uh-huh. are a corporate conglomerate. You uh-huh. are not meta. <laughs> no, you're not meta at all. And no. interacting on Facebook is not meta. No. You're not really thinking about thinking. No, you're not really thinking. You definitely not. It's yeah. like disinformation rather yeah. than anything else. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't like it, Aaron. I don't like it. I don't like it in a boat. You know who else doesn't like it? Who? Keanu Reeves. They asked him once, just random, this is, this is, yeah. They asked him once, like, what he thought of Facebook uh, renaming to Meta. And he's like, that's so stupid. And he was like, it, it feels like they're trying to cap, cap, capitalize on, like, a Matrix-type feel. And he's like, that's not right because the Matrix is about questioning things. Facebook is not about questioning Ooh. things. I was like, Keanu Reeves has spoken. You burnt Facebook. Yeah. You burnt. Neil himself has told you you're full of shit. Yeah. If Keanu Reeves doesn't like you, you are good What are you Lord. even doing? What are you even doing? You you're even doing, doing something wrong is you what you're doing. You are doing something wrong. That, yeah, that's right. You are doing something wrong. I agree. <laughs> so, Aaron, let's talk about, uh, you know, cult followings yeah. or mm-hmm. like cult audiences. Because mm-hmm. we're going to be picking and talking about books that maybe over time generated cult followings, mm-hmm. you know. Mm-hmm. Are there any cult followings that you cannot stand that you absolutely detest yes they're all in one area oh yep i can't stand anyone telling me about anything like food or drink related that they've discovered or put together or decided on that it is the newest coolest greatest thing nope like it's always someone and i'm sorry i'm it's usually health related Mm -hmm. it's usually like oh if you take the juice of a 
pomegranate <laughs> and a papaya and mix it together. And oh my God, if you put a little slash of club soda, uh-huh. and a little, it's the best cocktail I've ever had. And then I put this little sprig of, no one does that. No. Shut up. Mm-mm. Like I can't, I cannot, I cannot deal with these new. And I don't mean like people that truly make culinary masterpieces are like, look what I did. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like you took normal ingredients or you walked into a store and found a beverage and now you're trying to tell everyone that it's the greatest thing ever. Like these sparkling waters or these waters that increase your metabolism or Uh whatever. And like, you shouldn't drink pop. You should drink Celsius. What? That's just another word for degree in different countries. What are you talking about? (laughs) Get your can out of my face. I'm not following it. And they but you're always, right. It's always about like, oh, I've I've figured it out. Yeah. I've figured out the way. I've yes. hacked my body and I, it'll work for you too. Yes. Yeah. I found this great green juice, but you have to get it here and you have to. No. 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 And they always have a cult following. Like yes. a group of people that are, that's they're all in. Like, you know, there's a Facebook group and all they do is talk about that one thing. <laughs> and I cannot commit to something that hard. There's just something that won't allow it in my no. being. No. Like, even if you told me I could, I, I love Dr. Pepper, as we just discussed. Yeah. If you told me I had to drink that every day, I'd be like, I won't. I just right. won't do it because you yeah. told me I have to. So then when you're coming at me and you're like, look it, I put granola and this together and it was great. Good for you. Yeah. Keep your gross trail mix over there. <laughs> I don't want it. Okay. Well, and also it's going to be super expensive, whatever it yes. is. It's going to be yes. something that is only, you know. Like somehow it's become out of reach for everybody and that makes it even more exclusive yes. and more cult-like. Yeah. Also, like thinking about it now after we've read the book Cultish, like it yeah. all just, all we have it. this tendency to like, to do that, mm-hmm. to somehow want to generate cults around things and, and around our language, around like actions, all sorts of stuff. Yeah. Yes. And I don't like that. I don't like how everything becomes like like that and, and nuanced when it should be. Like yeah. I'm a I'm a devout coffee drinker. I start every day of my life with coffee. But there's a weird thing around that too. Totally like if that is. gets brought up, then it'll be like, well, how do you roast your beans? I don't. No. Okay. I buy them. Yep. My or, brown you know, coffee. Yeah. I take mine with a splash of this and two, this and one of these, and then this and then that. No, that's not. Okay. That's well, fine. then there's all the like bulletproof coffee. Yeah. And like all of this other weird, like culty stuff around yeah. coffee. Like, just stop it. Yeah. Stop it. And it it feels like this club that you yes. want everyone to belong to. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I don't need to belong to a club, club because I like coffee. You didn't discover anything new. Stop trying to reinvent something. It's fine. You're right. There's like two things at play. There's like, come join me in this club. Come yeah. be with me. But also, I'm the leader of this yes. club. I've figured it out. I invented this. Yes. No, you didn't. That product no. already existed. <laughs> Maybe in a slightly different form, but that doesn't mean that you invented it. Just because I put mango in a stir fry a long time ago does not mean I invented that idea of sweet and sour. No. Yeah. Unfortunately I mean, not. I felt like I did. I felt like I was a I genius. I want to give you credit because that does still feel pretty revolutionary. Okay. okay. Thank but you. also, you didn't then start a Facebook group <laughs> called did. Mango and Stir Fry. And make all of us be mangoites and get on every Thursday and talk about what we put mango in that week. That's true. I didn't do that. Like, sorry, I'm my mango group. I'll, I'll see you in an hour. What? No. No. We've got a live meeting on Slack to yeah. talk about our new, you know, mango and recipes. You know what it comes down to? People aren't just comfortable just being who they are. No, they're not. They're, they're not okay unless they know that everybody else likes it or wants yes. to do it too. Yeah. And you know, and what? this happened, I think, before social media. This yes. was not just a, an invention no. of social media. Like no. we had this tendency, right? Right. Mm-hmm. Ugh. Okay, so now that I shit all over cult followings, <laughs> are you a cult follower of anything? <laughs> you shit over a particular brand of cult following, particularly mm-hmm. around food. My yes. cult followings are much more around. Uh, artists and creators. Oh, okay. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And I think there's two levels. I think there's okay. fan, uh-huh. like a real big fan. Okay. Like I am a huge fan of Taika Waititi. Oh, yep. <laughs> was that weird? <laughs> that was a weird noise. I can tell by your reaction. I can't, I don't know what it sounded like, but I don't think it was good. <laughs> I shouldn't bodily groan when his name comes up, probably. <laughs> This whole interaction was meta. I made a noise and then spent two minutes talking about the noise I made. <laughs> I'm going to have to isolate that sound <laughs> and use it like our radio DJ okay. thinks. Yeah. Did it sound like the mummy from that one news club? Uh. It was just really intense. <laughs> Listen, I don't disagree with okay. that moan. It good, was an good. accurate moan. I feel the same way. <laughs> good. All right. Good. 
good, good, good. It was also how close you got to the microphone or something. <laughs> So, uh huh, uh huh. Fan, super mm-hmm. fan of what Taika Waititi, people Me like too. Sebastian, <laughs> you know, things where like I will watch anything they do, I uh-huh. will follow whatever they do, right? And then I think there's like cult following, where I'm seeking out random information everywhere. I'm following them everywhere, and that's like my David Bowie level, yeah. you know, okay. cult following. Okay, where, <laughs> <laughs> where you. You wouldn't even moan because you couldn't, it's, you're past that. <laughs> Everybody just knows. Everybody just knows. Yeah. Like it's not, mm-hmm. I don't have to do the moan anymore. Mm-hmm. It's just implicit. It's just a part of you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I think it's the level of obsession that I get to, mm-hmm. you know, like the fact that I know all these weird random rumors about David Bowie in the seventies. Like it's just, yeah. you know, you get, you get to a certain level. Okay. And, uh, a book that I wrote, like I involved him as a character. So it's like a whole where like I admire not only the work that they put out, but them as a person, the impact that they had as a person. Like with mm-hmm. David Bowie, I feel like obviously his music and everything is so um, beautiful and wonderful. But like the way that he owned his sexuality in a time that that wasn't really you know known, and it, the way that he paved the way for a lot of weirdos yeah. like me mm-hmm. to you know feel more comfortable in the world. That is like my cult following. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. He's really good. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> Can't do it now I don't even know. What did you say? Like, oh, yeah. Something like that. You said Taika Waititi and you went, oh. <laughs> I don't even think I said words, which is not great work on my part. But, yeah. <laughs> so that's where I'm at right now. Oh, boy. Uh-huh. I don't think really anything I said after that moan matters because that was that – was, that was pretty much it. That was a that was that was a real <laughs> moment that everyone got. Is what that was. That was a real. That was a moment, moment that we mm-hmm. got. How much you love mm-hmm. Taika Waititi. Mm-hmm. I feel partly responsible for this. I'm gonna have to admit to you, and yeah. I feel very good about that. No, you're 100. I feel like yeah, because I I think I was aware of him, mm-hmm. um, and that he was creating a lot of great stuff, but I didn't like really like fall head over heels until our flag means death and I only watched that because of you and mm-hmm. then it started me down this rabbit hole and now I'm just obsessed with him like mm-hmm. I cannot get enough he's hilarious mm-hmm. everything he makes is amazing it's amazing and I'll fight anyone who says <laughs> otherwise <laughs> <laughs> I really won't but <laughs> although I feel that way like anybody who doesn't like him it feels like they don't quite get me in a way Mm -hmm. because it's my sense i love that sense of humor that he has that pathos he has and maybe that's why we love him so much same thing with david bowie where i love that constant metamorphosis i love the fact that he feels like there's so obviously he's passed on so it's not a present tense situation but like you know felt so close to or showing different identities showing different things like i love that and it feels like in a way that speaks to me as a person. And maybe that's ultimately what a cult following is about. It's yeah. somehow feeling that intense personal connection yeah. to that person or to that piece of work. Mm-hmm. And I think you hit on something important there is that that kind of cult following is contagious. Yeah. Because if someone came with me at that kind of energy mm-hmm. and had some kind of granola concoction, I'd be a lot more interested. That's true. Yeah. But it's like, you don't really believe it. You just think you should. Yeah. And I can see that. And I don't want to participate. Yeah. Participate. Yeah. Maybe that's why. Yeah. When it comes to like fitness or health or stuff yeah. like that, it's just like you're just playing a part. You're just yeah. acting or something. Yeah. Whereas when it comes to like art and books and all that, it feels much more real. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I somehow feel weird about Taylor Swifties. Like I don't quite trust it. Oh. I don't know why that is. I don't know why. Maybe it's because she's achieved such a level of popularity that I don't feel like it's a cult following. I don't know. I don't uh-huh. understand it. But I got a weird sense in me that I'm just like, I don't like it. You don't like the Swift? Okay. No. Is there other music like you don't like the the followers? Like I think it was Megan The Stallion has hot, hotties. Is it hotties? No, I'm good with her. Okay. She's great. Yeah, she's amazing. She was great on SNL, by the way. So good. Loved that. So good. Yeah. They obviously thought she was great, too, because they put her in almost every sketch. Yes. Which is Which not, is great. Yeah. It was yeah. amazing. Well, I'm trying to think of another person's Yeah. Face. The Beehive. Mm. No, I understand that. That's okay. justified. Okay. Maybe it's just me. Like, I don't really connect with Taylor Swift's music, so I don't so you understand You're distrustful. It. I get yep. it. I get yep. it. Yeah. I get it. I get it. Yeah. I get it. Mm-hmm. Well, we went on a journey there. We did. And we came back. I've recovered. Here we are. 
I still have a sniffly nose from laughing so hard. Well, I apologize. That was quite the moan. (laughs) Again, like I said, what I want to do is isolate that Mm -hmm. and use it as a sound effect in the future. That's fair. I'm fine with it. Like whenever we mention Taika, maybe use that. uh, In the background. (laughs) Or maybe when, you know, maybe it becomes part of our rating system for books and movies. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll see. We'll see Mm -hmm. what happens. Okay. Okay. So... Moving on to books. Moving on to books. Uh (laughs) Remember, we're not talking about reigning men literally here. We're talking Uh, about cult followings, mm -hmm. books and pop culture picks that have, that maybe weren't super popular to begin with, but Mm -hmm. have somehow developed a cult following. Mm -hmm. I feel like in our novel category, I've already done a few, like... I Love Dick could mm-hmm. be considered a cult Very, book. Yes. Master and Margarita mm-hmm. could be considered one. Um, the Bell Jar was actually listed as a, a cult book for a lot of people, which is interesting. That's interesting. Yeah. yeah. Um, but today I'm going with a book that may, you may not agree that it's a cult book, but I think it is. Okay. And it's Slaughterhouse Five oh, from Kurt Vonnegut. I can get there right away. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So this came out in 1969. And the reason I think it's sort of cult is because some schools assign this like uh-huh. it's become part of the canon but it's also consistently one of the books that's uh attacked as it should be banned mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and that happens starting when it was published all the way to now like when the book uh in 1972 it was stricken from the public schools in michigan and the circuit judge called it depraved immoral psychotic vulgar and anti-christian also, I think those are all ringing endorsements in my mind. Yeah, I don't. That was supposed to get people to not read it. Right. Okay. In 1973, a school in North Dakota set a bunch of copies on fire in the school's <laughs> coal burner, <laughs> which is great because, you know, the book talks about Nazis and here we are just doing Nazi behavior. Uh-huh. And in uh-huh. 1982, one school banning, it made it all the way to the Supreme Court and it was overturned. So... I think there's that element of it, but I also think Kurt Vonnegut fans are very obsessive mm-hmm. about his work. Mm-hmm. I wouldn't call myself that. I really only liked this particular book, but I think this book, it it deserves the attention both good and band wise. Because, you know, when you ban a book, as we've said, you mm-hmm. just make it, you make people want to read it more. Mm-hmm. So here's the story, such mm-hmm. as it is. By the way, did you ever read this? Yes. Okay. Amazing. Was it assigned in the school? No. Okay. Mm -mm. It was mentioned, I believe, by one of my AP teachers, Mm -hmm. one of my AP English teacher, mentioned it passing about something and it piqued my interest Mm -hmm. and I read it on my own. Yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to remember when I did and it was either part of like the Central Academy curriculum or like Mm. a college thing or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But like I said, here's the story. Billy Pilgrim is unstuck in time. He keeps going backward and forward through his life. And he was a soldier in World War II, and he hated it. He refused to fight, but he's put into the Battle of the Bulge towards the end of the war, and he's captured by the Germans. And he and the other POWs are forced to work in Dresden in an empty slaughterhouse. Mm -hmm. And then Dresden is firebombed. It's this massive, very uh, morally suspect act of the war, bombed by the Allies. Mm -hmm. After that, he comes home. He's put in a psych hospital. Um, then eventually he's married, he has kids, and then he's abducted by aliens. And he's put in a people zoo on their home planet. Right? Yeah. I forgot about all this. I had to remind myself of some of the plot points. Because I remembered like the weird zoo thing Uh where there's a porn star Uh along with him. And I remembered like Dresden. Uh Uh-huh. And I remembered the birds. Uh Uh-huh. But a lot of it I'd forgot. Yes. So that's just sort of the tip of the wildness. There is so much weird stuff in here. There is, yeah. Weird and wild. And basically it comes down to the things that he's witnessed, the devastation of Dresden, the things that he saw in the POW working camp, the things he saw in the war. They've unstuck him from anything normal Mm -hmm. and anything real. And so he's having to relive the same things over and over. And I think that's another reason it potentially kind of falls into this category because we as humans don't learn right like we're supposed to learn from the mistakes of the past and we don't we keep doing the same devastating things Mm -hmm. which is then so ironic because then we keep trying to ban this fucking book even though it's telling us like listen watch 
look at our past, mm -hmm. see what's happened. We can't keep repeating this. But instead, the book is burned mm -hmm. by a school board. Mm -hmm. So I think that's another aspect maybe of cult books, too, is that there's this sort of illicitness, but also this deeply ironic reaction to it. Mm -hmm. You know, people freak out over it because it is so true, because mm -hmm. it is so real. There's this blindness to it in the reception. And yeah, I think that that to me made this uh, a book with a cult following, but also sort of an underground cult book. Mm hmm. I, it reminded me of something that I heard this week that I is like the most meta thing I've ever heard about banning books. So that's mm -hmm. perfect. John Green, who's written a ton of young adult yeah. books, um, his own book got banned in his own high school by a lady that he went to high school with. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. It's being challenged. I shouldn't say. I guess I don't know what the outcome of the challenge was, but, but she brought challenged. the challenge to the school board. His high school he graduated from, lady he graduated with. What are the grounds of the challenge? Like he's sex. Oh, yeah. good lord! Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It feels like you're right. Like it feels like school banning is so meta at the same time that it's deeply unmeta. Like right. there's a lack of obviously lack of critical thinking there, a lack of thinking about your thinking, a lack of understanding what you're doing, and that right. you're just repeating the same stupid behaviors mm -hmm. that keep going on and on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we never learn. No, we never learn. No, nope. we never learn. And nope. so Billy Pilgrim just lives the same thing over and over and over again. Yeah. In his people zoo with his porn star. Are we all in a people zoo? I think with we porn might be. Star? We yeah. might be, right? I think maybe Earth is just, you know, like a in Men in zoo? Black. <laughs> Remember in Men in Black, yeah. like the Earth is just one tiny pebble in yeah. the aliens, like, yeah. you know, marble jar. Yeah. I think that's us. That seems. I mean, a couple episodes ago, we blew open the alien conspiracy we that did. they're already here. They are, well, they are. And they're trying to eat us. They are. So. <laughs> My mind is a weird place. <laughs> but yes, all that's true. <laughs> yep. Uh-huh. Well, for the book I brought this week, it was released in 1978. <laughs> yeah. So also bringing it back but i picked it very specifically because i don't know about you but i was a huge fan of judy bloom growing mm. up and to me she almost has a cult following Definitely. at a certain age yeah. especially i just feel like you find out about judy bloom books i don't know if it's still that way necessarily but i didn't read this book until a few years ago but it was the first novel she wrote for adults mm. released in 1978 it was called wifey Hmm. I ate Judy Blue. So um, I'll tell you the story first in the little background. But this is the main character's name is Sandy Pressman. And she sounds just like her name. Housewife, raised to be a housewife, but entirely unfulfilled. Her husband keeps encouraging her to make friends at the club, like the country club the that they belong to, work? right? And she tries to work on her golf game and concentrate on her hair, but it's just not enough. Ugh. And when temptation can no longer be ignored, she dabbles in exploring some other feelings she's having with maybe other guys. Well. So to me, this is a, a story really that's about the nuance of women's lives and desires. And it's not just a straightforward tale about an unfulfilled housewife. There's a lot more in there. But it's pretty revolutionary if you think about the time period that mm -hmm. it came out. And I picked it for this theme because it was the first book that Judy Bloom wrote for an adult, and it was met with some weird reactions. Really? Yeah, very weird. And I'm going to quote her. She said, when Wifey was published, some people thought I would never write another children's book. Some people thought I had written a real book at last, and some were angry that I hadn't used a pseudonym, and others that I even had such thoughts. Plus, I began to hear from old boyfriends and those who wanted to be. <laughs> love that as a quote because could that not be more of a female experience dealing with a book that is still today ms bloom right yeah. it just oh felt my so God. like some people were like how dare you think like that some people thought oh she's not gonna write kids books anymore she should have used a different name but i i loved her young adult books I, like i said i didn't find this until later and i loved this book too i think mm. it there's so m many interesting points in it, even for the time period that it was written. There's so many thoughts that are valid and to see it played out in such an interesting way. Plus, I feel like what she did at that time and bringing this book out and saying, so what? Yeah. I can do both was part of the reason she has such a cult following because mm -hmm. I think there's something about her spirit and the characters she writes that make you think, you know what? 
yeah like you feel seen yeah without maybe being exactly like the characters she still has that ability to bring people in and i think that that's that's kind of part of the reason i mean she's probably ended up being more of a trend i'd say when we were younger but to think that she had that crossover and it was as successful is there was still a feel of like illicitness with her yes I think, there's you know? always that around yeah her because she was like, always pushing the, the right. boundary i remember as a kid like I, I don't remember which one it was maybe forever Are you there, god it's me mark oh i read that okay. but like what was the one where like there was actual sex and it was very like uh-huh. pretty explicit and it was like yes was it forever i think Is it was that, forever. okay yeah and it felt very much like oh god yeah like, this was written for me but it's still like you know, I've been reading all this stuff in like adult smut books, you right, know, but now right. this feels even like uh-huh. stranger in a way because this is for like me. Like you're confronting it head on. Yeah. What? Yeah. And that's what I loved I about this book too is like she just took it right head on and didn't like pull any punches. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, this is instead of the clutching the pearls like, oh, we don't talk about that. Well, why not? Yeah. And it's happening. So why aren't we talking yeah. about it? That's great. Yeah. It's an it's an interesting one. It's spicy. Oh. Yeah. Get it, Judy. She didn't shy away from anything, really. So was it, it in Forever that like the guy named his penis, and like I want you to meet Mister Blah Blah Blah? Oh, Do you remember that? Yeah. And I remember thinking as a kid, like, okay, that's ridiculous, but also I kind of like this. this yeah. Is great. <laughs> I'm gonna keep reading. Yeah. Oh my gosh, that makes me want to go back and reread some of those. I think I'm remembering that, that right. Yeah, yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Uh-huh. I love also that the reaction was basically how you dare you write something different because I yes. think adults or uh, authors still get that. Like, yes. You got to do the same thing you always do. Uh huh. Or else. Right. What do you do? Otherwise, doing? you should use a different name because yeah. oh, you're you're ruining our kids, which Good shows Lord. that you probably didn't read her books. Absolutely. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good pick. It's a doozy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that we we were in 1969. We were in 1978. Now we're going to 1924. Whoa! 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 So I think in the area of other genre books, I've already done a few cult books. Like Watchmen could be considered yeah. a, yes. a cult yeah. book, right? And here I'm doing a novella. I love a Your novella. Your favorite. I love a novella. Yep. And this comes from the author of Master and Margarita, oh. Mikhail Bulyakov. Okay. And this book is called Heart of a Dog. And similar to Master and Margarita, this was banned in the USSR when it came out in 1925. It came out in English in 1968. And then it finally came out in the Soviet Union in 1987. Wow. When things were already falling apart. Right. So in the book, it's Moscow. It's 1924. And there's a stray dog in the street. And he's hurt. And he's found by a surgeon, Dr. Priobozhensky. I think I got that right. That's pretty good. That sounded Um, good. And this is a time, you know, communism has taken over. The the revolution has happened. And the doctor, uh, the doctor who's also a professor, he is anti-communist. But he treats members of the party. So he gets to do whatever he wants. Oh. Even though someone else who's anti-communist will probably be arrested and, you know, taken away. He's like, oh, I'm untouchable. Right. Okay. So he gets to do what he wants. And that includes experimenting. He wants to try to improve the human race. Mm-hmm. So he gives the dog... Shriek, a human pituitary gland and human testicles in a very shady operation. And Sharif begins to transform into a human slash dog. Oh, my. And because he's starting to he's gradually becoming looking more and more human. The doctor and his team try to teach him manners because that's their first priority. Yeah. But he refuses because he's like, that's stupid. Okay. And then one day he sets out his, on his own to oh. create his own life okay. in the new Moscow. Okay. And he finds a wife. He finds all the things that a human is supposed to do. So this is absurd humor. It's super satire. It's so many different things. It's also a pretty thinly veiled attack on the way the Communist Party was trying to create new humans in this in this era right. of communism. Um, it's a very slim book, like I said, a novella. Um, but there's a lot here, and it's just rife for a cult following. And like I talked about with uh, Master and Margarita, I think part of the cult following of his work in particular is the fact that it was banned mm-hmm. in the Soviet Union, um, that uh, you know, 
it, that it came out in English first in, in other countries yeah. and developed a cult following there. And that, the, of course, there was this illicitness back home. And when it finally did come out, mm-hmm. you know, the, the the Soviet people were able to see like, oh, shit, this is hardcore. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, this is a, a fun fact. When I did my master's thesis on Master Margarita, I actually compared it to this book. I used these two books to talk about different times in the Soviet Union. Yeah. So, uh I had read this a long time ago and reminding myself of the plot points. I was like, that was a, that was a wild book. Yeah. It was a weird, wild book. Dog becomes human. I also really liked the idea of like, let's say the cats, the pod cats, uh-huh. were going to turn into humans. Uh-huh. I think they would also eschew manners. Be like, what the hell yeah. is this? Yeah. Why are we hell sp- no. wasting time on that? But then I got to thinking like, would they try and make it out on their own? Would they try and like, you know, or would they be like, uh, I get free food here. Yeah, I think immediately they'd yeah. be like, that's a lot of work. I'm yeah. not leaving. <laughs> you mean I have to work out there? Yeah, no. That's dumb. Mm-mm. I want to keep snapping. No, because I think you're, you're, they would have had to evolve to an even higher level of thinking to want a sense of self. Right. And I don't think that immediately they would have that. And once you do get that sense of self and you realize like, oh, I got to work really hard to keep that sense of self. Yeah. Maybe I'll just stay here. Yeah. There's no reason. She's got health insurance. Yeah. Things seem great. She seems like an unlimited supply of food that comes from nowhere. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, and she stares at a box a lot of the day, and yeah. she tells me she needs to do that to make the money to keep the food coming in. I don't understand it, but whatever. 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 There's food, so <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'd be good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I went a little bit different direction. Okay. Um, this is a book that just came out in this month, October mm. 2022. It's called Reading the Stars. And it's published by Book Riot, which is a podcast and like a website. Like they kind of. Um, They've become a publisher? They do, they have published oh, some things. Oh, I didn't yeah. know that. Okay. Just like within the ha- like their own kind of wheelhouse. Okay. So what this is, is a book that goes by your um, astrological sign and kind of explains your reading life and books that you haven't heard of that you might like. Oh. Other signs that you have like reading connections with, authors yeah. that have your same sign. So it's kind of, I know this sounds kind of weird, but it is, it's beautifully illustrated. I heard about it. I purchased it on a whim. It's this great hardcover. It has really nice illustrations. It's really fun to read through. I think it would be an amazing gift headed into gifting season because you're giving the gift of a book, but it's also like, here's a bunch of other books you might like. Especially maybe if you have readers already in your life and you're like, I don't know if they've read that book or not. But I picked it really for this theme because what's more of a cult following than astrology? That's exactly what I was going to say. It's just so... It's so... Yeah. And And it seems to kind of like get popular and then go away. Get popular and go away. Yes. And I feel like there's different levels of cult following with astrology, right? Like there's the diehards that like know everything and Mm -hmm. all their whole life is sort of dictated by like, oh, I can't hang out with you because you're a Virgo and we don't mix right. and whatever. And then there's other people that like they know their sign and uh-huh. maybe they glance at a horoscope. And this can meet you wherever you are because there's tons of great information. And I mean, they took stars and combined it with reading. That's great. Yeah. I mean, come on. We had to recommend yeah. it. But I really actually I thought it was really well done. I think it's a fun little book. And I, I read through my sign and there were books in there that I really? hadn't. Yeah. That I hadn't read or even heard of. So what is your sign? Taurus. Okay. Yeah. What's yours? Cancer. Okay. So what does that mean? Are we supposed to hang out or are we not? I don't know. Not okay. No. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't either. No. It really feels like, um, and this may sound old, but it really feels like young people are embracing astrology. Uh, like yes. it's, it's a big thing it's right now, right? It's making a big comeback. Yeah. 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 And I don't know if that's because everything feels so out of control uh-huh. and the world is weird. Yeah, and, and so, there's like this kind of giving it up factor. Yeah. Like, well, I can't help it because Virgo's third moon is in right. regression. So <laughs> what am I going to do? Boop, boop. And Uranus is rising. Yeah. I don't know. Right. I don't know there's any of those things. things. No, I know yeah. nothing. I know very enough to know like what my, you know, quote unquote personality traits are based on my sign. What are your personality traits? Stubborn. Oh. Um, I'm independent. Uh-huh. I don't like to do group projects. That's, uh, that's yeah. all valid. Like I don't like to rely on someone else to finish something. I'd just rather do it myself. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Um, I'm easygoing until I'm not. That's until true. Until you like that's push true. me too far and uh-huh. then I'm just not anymore. Um, th- I mean, those are the basics that are true to yeah. my personality. They're very true to my uh-huh. personality. But And like I know that Mike is an Aquarius and his are very similar too. Like uh-huh. um, 
not very communicative in like emotional topics, um, really uh, laid back and easy, but also very particular about how yeah. like their job gets done yeah. specifically. So it's, yeah. This sounds all very true. So it are is. you two supposed to be a couple? Uh, we're not on the don't list. Okay. So okay. I guess, yes, I don't know. Okay. Yeah. So you're not star-crossed lovers or are you star? I still don't know what that means either. I think that might, right? That has okay. to be, yeah. yeah. I mean, I know that's Romeo and Juliet, but right, right. yeah, they're star-crossed. Star-crossed. So. Shouldn't be, shouldn't be doing it. Hmm. And this, it was just interesting because it took your signs and kind of explained some of like how your re- how your reading life works That's really or like cool. it's yeah. really neat and it's a cool idea. They have some great illustrations. They have little illustrations of authors in there, and I enjoyed it. I thought it was fun, um, and it was I think perfect timing to come out because what a great gift idea. Yeah, it really works yeah. well. I think as a gift. So very cool. Yeah, I enjoyed. It. I actually meant to grab it so I could show you, and I forgot to bring it, but. It was a good one. I'm trying to remember anything about what cancer is supposed to be, and I have no idea. Yeah, I I only know because I just yeah, you just looked at it. Yeah, deeper. I just got the book and thought, oh, I'm gonna yeah refresh myself <laughs> on this. But I thought, oh my god, this is perfect timing because it's cult following and it's kind of meta to think about your astrological very sign, much is you know yeah thinking about like oh, thinking about who you're supposed to be mm-hmm. and like and uh. I remember like growing up there would be horoscopes everywhere but it felt very much like like our parents generation or something like that was something for them Mm -hmm. and for us like we sort of was like "Uh, okay it's bullshit and then suddenly it's come around again for the young kids yeah well I think there was always horoscopes in our newspaper yeah I always read them I know they were fun and then I was always like wow now I'm more like wow I'm impressed with the way you can write so vague that it makes it seem (laughs) like it's true like doable yeah Yeah. but then I think where it took a turn was then when we got into like you know those psychics like who is the lady Madam, uh, there was one that was really popular for a while. Miss Cleo. Oh, yeah. yeah. There was all these like, you know, that kind of phone psychic thing uh-huh. took off for a while. And then everybody's like, whoa. I think it kind of got all put together yeah, in a right. basket. Like yeah. all that. You're crazy if you believe in that because you're probably one step away from spending thousands of dollars that's with true. a phone psychic. Yeah. You know, like it became a different thing. But again, I think that's back because there's like, there's, yes. a dude, there's a dude on Instagram that keeps messaging me like I, I've i had a, 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 I can't remember what he says, something about your sign. I know there's something about your sign. We need to talk. And I'm like, yeah, no, 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 we don't. What? Yeah. And it's like a fake account because I follow like Saul the drag queen and it's a fake account based on him. So it looks like him and like he's, you know, connecting with me and then I'll block them and then someone else sort of similar comes up. So it's some spam thing. But it's so weird that it's Ew. coming at me with astrology. I'm like, you, like you know that. nothing about me. Wow. Yeah. That's terrible because, you know, some people are getting sucked in. Totally sucked in. Because that feels too pointed It and feels weird. so pointed. It got yeah. to the point where I was like, whoa, what? Seriously, you know something about me? Like, there was a point where I was like, oh, should I respond? Yeah. I, I like, can no, see why. No, yeah. I shouldn't. No. Yeah. That would be good. very. Yeah. Ooh. It was very like, you know, it was like a whole new take on a Nigerian scam. Yeah. Well. Gosh, I hope that prince ever got where he was going. <laughs> By the way, remember the Our Flag Means Death episode where uh-huh. they originated that scam? Uh-huh. That was so brilliant. It's amazing. I loved so it. So amazing. Like we own a part of a pyramid. Uh-huh. I own part of a pyramid. pyramid? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, goodness. Uh-huh. Well, for pop culture. Yeah. I've got a movie film. Mm. Came out in 1998. Ooh. It's called Velvet Goldmine. Oh. Have you ever seen this? No. Okay. It's set in the UK in the early 1970s and in a sort of alternate 1980s. So in in this alternate 1984, there's a journalist, Arthur, who's played by Christian Bale. Mm. And he is writing about a glam rock star named Brian Slade, who apparently died 10 years earlier on stage. And Arthur is remembering his own fan days when he was obsessed with glam rock, especially because it it gave him the courage to own his sexuality. So Arthur starts talking to people in Brian Slade's life, and we get flashbacks of Brian Slade Mm. over this time. So Brian is played by Jonathan Rhys Myers. Okay. And he is a struggling songwriter around the turn of the 1970s. He marries Mandy, who is Toni Collette. Like, this movie is stacked. (laughs) Who encourages him, Mandy, like, encourages him to be brash and to be bold and Mm -hmm. to own sort of the weird things about you. 
And then Brian witnesses a performance by American rock star Kurt Wilde, okay. who is Ewan McGregor. Ooh. Ooh. And Brian is fascinated and he's obsessed. Yeah. So that starts a creative collaboration and eventually a sexual collaboration. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So along the way, there's musical performances, there's shady managers, mm. there's tons of rock and roll drama. Mm-hmm. And there's this mystery about what really happened when Brian Slade disappeared. Mm-hmm. I love this movie. And from that description, you probably understand why. Mm-hmm. Because a big reason is probably the the characters are based on people that I am obsessed with. Mm-hmm. Brian Slade is basically David Bowie. Okay. They, in fact, tried to get David Bowie songs for this movie. And mm. David Bowie was like, nah, I'm, I'm out. Hmm. Kurt Wilde is a combo of Iggy Pop and Lou Reed, and they got their songs Ah. for the movie, which is so cool. The storylines, especially of like the sexual uh, interactions, have some similarities to true stories and rumors about those stars, too. But why I picked it is because this was a major flop in theaters. Like, it went nowhere. Okay. But then it came out on video and has become a huge cult classic like okay. people especially for people who are like in you know subcultures like whether it's glam rock fans whether it's lgbtq people whether it's people that you know gravitated to the people that it's based on uh people that saw themselves in it like it's become a huge cult following type movie mm-hmm. and uh there's also like a weird oscar wilde element to it like there's so much here yeah and so yeah i highly recommend it and also there's some excellent rock performances Ooh. everyone sings their own stuff love it ewan mcgregor you see uh naked ewan mcgregor i just want to um encourage you well, by you could have just led with point. that <laughs> right but yeah it's like like i said all those people this was 1998 yeah. before they were huge stars yeah so it's really really cool to see all that that's awesome yeah okay well i went a little bit with my pop culture pick it's also a movie film okay um but i went kind of on the meta side like okay. thinking about thinking and what does okay. it mean to be a person and to be alive and all of this stuff mm-hmm. so i picked the movie free guy Oh! Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> I love Free Guy. Okay, I'm so glad because I, I just recently watched it and I loved it, but I have not heard good things about it prior to that. Really? Like I had, it had sort of been panned a little bit in oh. reviews. I don't know. So uh, yeah, I loved it. So Ryan Reynolds, uh, Jody, is it Comer or Comer? Comer, Comer mm-hmm. that's what I thought. Taiko Waititi. Yeah. Play Channing Tatum. I, oh my God. <laughs> who plays a guy named... <laughs> Revengeman Buttons. I mean, uh, I can't get enough of that name alone. Yeah. And Joe Keery from Stranger Things. Yes. And Joe yep. Keery. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yep. So basically the story is Ryan Reynolds finds out that he's an NPC or a background character in a first person online game. But he also finds out that he can play a larger role and starts breaking out of all these rules because he was pulled out of a trance by Jodie Comer's character. Mm-hmm. So... Who Ty- used Mariah Carey to pull him to out pull of the To pull him out. Yeah. The best. Yeah. Just And immediately when that song, I started singing it automatically. Yeah. Sweet, sweet fantasy, baby. Oh, yeah. Love it. Mm-hmm. And Taika Waititi, come on. As the villain. As the villain. The as villain. the gross, evil video game villain. Such an egomaniac oh, asshole. I love it. His outfit in it is just ridiculous. And his name is Antoine, which mm-hmm. is perfect. It's just perfect. When he gets out of the car the first time, I didn't know he was in it. We just, oh. I had just wanted to see it. We watch it and he gets out of the car and I was like, you are kidding me. I was so happy. I was so happy. And I also loved it because my kids play video games. And so I'm, I've never been a video game yeah. person. I don't really get it. So, but watching it and thinking about it in this yeah. way, it was so interesting to think about a character who's alive there and you're rooting for him, but he's a video game character. Mm-hmm. And there's stuff about AI and, you know, down the road, what video games are going to do. And I loved that. And I just felt like it had this very, very meta feel about all the ideas and interactions Absolutely. and that this guy's decisions, because in the in real life um joe carey and uh jody comer's characters have a lawsuit against taika waititi's character antoine because he stole their coding to put in his game mm-hmm. so th- how this game turns out for ryan ryan reynolds actually has real life consequences which is so weird mm-hmm. to think about mm-hmm. but amazing and the way they did it was so clever ryan reynolds character is hilarious so good the whole idea is hilarious because it kind of does a parody of video games to begin with because yes. his whole life he's a bank teller and all he does every day is drop to the floor because someone comes in and robs the bank yes yeah, some like main player yeah. yes 
which is I just love that that is the idea because if you watch any of these video games that's what's happening right they're finding weapons they're going it's like the same thing over and over and I love that the idea that these characters in it are just living this other life well and there's like a weather report at the beginning like a lot of signs for mass murder today yeah, or something like something's that you gonna know? happen at the beach yeah <laughs> or and that the coffee lady can only make coffee one way she's like cappuccino what what's a cappuccino it's amazing I like too when he pulls like because you know a big element of those games is like very supposedly beautiful women yes. that have no purpose other than just hanging on the arm of the main player yeah and at one point he gets to speak to one it's like you're you're more than this you're aren't you like this. what do you want to do and she's like you're right yeah. and decides to like go back to school and yeah. do all this or write like a memoir or something it's amazing it's so great and i'm telling you the there's so many great little performances mm-hmm. in it. Channing Tatum as that Revengeman Buttons guy. Oh boy. When he's doing the dance yeah. on screen. Uh-huh. And then the character that they actually have playing him in mm-hmm. real life behind the computer, which obviously doesn't look anything like <laughs> no. Channing Tatum. Oh my gosh, amazing. And I just, Taika Waititi going on a rampage in a corporate, you know, IT type situation. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Amazing. There's lots of nice little cameos. Too. Yes. Yeah. So many great cameos. Uh-huh. It was wonderful. I thought it was great. I thought it was funny, but I also thought it had kind of this bigger purpose and message, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. I think you nailed that one. Absolutely. Yeah. Both the meta aspect and the... Yeah. And sort of the cult following of games, too. Yes. You know? Yeah. yeah. That's what I felt like, too. And I didn't feel like this... Like, I heard a bunch about this movie when it came out. Like, yeah. it was so good that everyone was like, oh, Well, it kept getting it. delayed because of COVID. So yes. I think that kind of hurt it. But, like, I think it's maybe done well on, you know, video. I think so, because there were some yeah. rumors about a second one. Yeah. It's, there's a second one There's coming. a second one uh-huh. coming? Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So... And yeah. Taika Waititi better be in it. Oh that's gosh. all I'm saying. Like him as a villain is wonderful. He's so good as a villain. Yeah. He's so good. When he sits down, crisscross applesauce to think <laughs> in the middle of the of his like corporate yeah. office. And he's just like, yeah. okay, here's what we're going to do. And he tries to do this flip to stand up and he can't do it. <laughs> it's just amazing. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. amazing. Yeah. Wonderful. I mm-hmm. imagine the behinds of the scenes of that was just a lot of like weird improv. And so much yeah improv. so much i can't uh you sent me this delightful clip of them taking uh them i just refer to them like i know them mm-hmm. uh reese darby and taika waititi taking lie detector tests and i can't oh get gosh. out of my head now because mike and i've been re-watching some of flight of the concords <gasps> and they say that reese darby basically improved all of yes! those band meetings yes can you believe that it's so amazing when you look at them now i just can't I, those are the things that make me laugh the yes. hardest are the band meetings when he's like uh, get a gig yeah item number i'm gonna get you another gig <laughs> over and over again <laughs> and did they say in that one or like another interview that they often had to just get reese on camera because the other two were laughing so hard yes. that they could yeah. yeah yeah they had to film their stuff separately yeah. their reactions separately because they were laughing too hard at him which I understand. I would be too. Yeah. We've talked about this. We're not having a band gig at night. It's too dangerous. <laughs> he was really good at his job. Yeah. Starby. So good yeah. at his job. Yeah. So good oh at his job. Mm-hmm. Also, that lie detector clip was so great. It's everything. I'm going to include that in the show notes. Yeah. Just as a little bonus. If you like Taika Waititi as much as we do. You, yeah. I, Mike watched Free Guy with me after we watched it. I showed him that. He laughed pretty hard too. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Very good. Mm-hmm. So yeah, is he on board with the Taika love? Yes, he is. Okay, yeah. good. Uh, mainly because I he's forced to because we watched Our Flag Means Death and he loved that. Mm-hmm. And then I we watched What You Do in the Shadows, yeah. the original. Yep. He loved that. Mm-hmm. You know, I've just been dragging him good, good, through good. the things. Good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. I just want to make sure he's on board. Mm-hmm. This is one of those situations where I have found like the solution to life and I want everyone to come on board. You need everyone on board. And that yes. is Taika Waititi. But this is a valid one. Yeah. Thank this you. This is valid. Thank you. This isn't, I put granola in a new thing. No. No. This is valid as evidenced by your very weird moan that you, <laughs> <laughs> that you gave to the world. I did. That was my gift. Yeah. My yeah. Taika Waititi moan. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. I have feelings oh, for him. Boy. I told you, his sense of humor Listen, is a big I, thing for me. And I get it. We both love him. Combined with yeah. his hotness. I can't right? help it. Yeah. And just watch that lie detector clip and tell me you don't fall in love with him. Oh, God. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I might have a midlife crisis later. Yeah. I, yeah. I want. I might want to have another one. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we could just talk about him forever. We could. But, you know, we should Maybe probably we should wind up on Maybe we start a Taika Waititi podcast. <laughs> 
under the Brads and Books umbrella, yeah. we'll have a sub podcast where each week that. we just go, oh. oh that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. Oh, Taika Waititi. Oh, oh man. What a guy. What a guy. It could rain him from the sky. It could ra- that. It, yeah. As long as it rains Raining right Taika here. Waititi's. Yeah. <laughs> Of course, then it's probably some weird cloning situation. Yeah, they're I don't want no, a little bit. They're not like him, really. No, yeah, no, exactly. We don't want that. That's fair. That's yeah. fair. Okay, if take it, it back. actually like picked him up tornado wise, like hurricane wise, okay. and dropped him over us mm-hmm. here in Iowa, yes, like from se- some weird climate change phenomenon to here, picked him up from LA, right. brought him here, or from New Zealand or wherever he is, and brought him here. Uh huh. Should that ever that. happen, I need an immediate phone call. Yeah, because. Obviously. Yeah, you're right. I was pointing to here, but I meant either here or at your place. Oh, okay. yeah. Well, no, I was fine to be here. Okay. There's a lot of distraction at my place. <laughs> that's true. I can bring him in the house and then keep him here. Yes. Yeah. Like, this sounds like a like, good thing. This, is, okay, what a, this is what a basement is for. <laughs> okay. Okay. We might want to cut that part. <laughs> we've now we've now planned the full crime. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm okay with it. All right. That's fine. All right. All right. Well, if I'm not arrested by the time, you know, two weeks rolls around, we'll be back. We will be back. With more picks. You know it. In the meantime. Happy reading. Happy reading.